All right, I laid the curtains out flat, as flat as I could, clamping at both ends. Hey guys and gals, don't worry about it if you're not even up there. Okay, do the best you can. All right, so what I did is I went five inches out on both sides to center this to the measurement of the gazebo. All right, so the inside of it is going to be the where I need to put corresponding to where the crosses are up on top. So you need to measure out from the 114 mark, which is at the hand of that of that clamp, and work over with the inches, the 38 inches, to get to the first X. So it's always easy easy start at the one on the on the tape measure, and measure over 38 inches. So 38 inches brings you right to this guy right here, the junction there. Half of 38 is the 19, which is that one right there. So at the 19, you're going to tape and put the plus 4 there because it's 4 inches up. At the 38 mark, you're just going to tape there because you're not going up any further. You're going to link straight to this guy right here. Over here, plus 19, takes you to 57. Put a plus 4 there on tape. You're taping it, then writing plus 4. Then you're going to come over here, and we're, we're around 76, I think. There's tape down there someplace, but uh, it goes to 0 basically right there. It's going to tape. Go right there, you go over 19 more inches, 95, okay, and you have plus 4 at the 95, we'll show that. Both ends are going to be going to, you know, going up there. It's, it's good to do that because with the bungee cord on the side, it's still going to droop, so it's best to tape up or uh, pin up to both ends. So this is going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I may have to get another bag of clamps because uh, there's eight in each one, so I'm going to have to get another bag from Staples. All right, so hey, when you go there, get three bags of, of uh, eight. I think it's important to tell you that I did tape all three and label all three at the same time. It's so much easier to do that. Okay, I'm going to go in now and, uh, and sew these. I'm going to use my industrial since my other machine is still in the vehicle, um, but I'm definitely going to have to bring a sewing machine out here in the garage to do this. All right, I have my sewing machine out. It's a Singer Heavy Duty. Okay, uh, because this is one I'm going to have in my garage doing the work. I've uh, done one of each. So what I did is I cut these out, and then uh, I hem the ends. So the ends are hemmed. It gives more strength when you're doing that, uh, when you hem the ends. If you're doing the hand stitching, it's going to take a little bit longer. Machines are a lot better. Okay, uh, you're going to loop it through. So you turn it sideways. You take this and put it in sideways and then turn it and then you're going to crunch it at the very bottom. I'm not sewing this together until it gets on the unit because uh, on the curtain because it's so narrow in there and uh, to grab it. I want to grab on both sides. On this one that's four inches. That's my plus four inches. Down on the bottom is open so it'll grab around. I, you see the dots there from me sewing all the way down. I had to cut those. So this is going to grab on both sides. The reason is I don't want it to pull just on one side and the curtain being awkward. So be even on both sides, the curtain is going to fit right in there, wrap it around and sew it into place. That's the idea and then that's going to be permanently on there. I did a pull test on this. With all my strength I pulled one hand on this, one hand on this and it didn't rip. And you, whatever you use, you want to do some kind of pull test because you don't want to hang your curtains and then they start breaking. All right. So just sew away, and then we'll go back to the curtain. All right, um, I'm going to show you how to put the uh, one that I mark at zero. All right, you're going to take, uh, you want your your clips to be like this, with the clip on this side, not down there. You, all of them to be the same way. So uh, so you got to make sure that you do that. So what I'm doing is I'm folding these, I've, I've hemmed them, and then I put them in sideways, and I turn them. And it'll smash a little bit. Come down, make it even on the bottom. This is going to go on each side of this one right here, where the tape is. I may have to trim the tape. There's a little excess tape down there, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. This can actually uh, sit out. We bring it up up here. The whole thing's going to move, and you got to make sure you only have you don't have this one in there. Okay. So uh, put it under. Okay. I have the foot pedal under my foot can't feel it, but I know it's down there somewhere. All right, so I'm going to put the shoe down, and I'm going to shoot across. I uh, just sucked up the thread. I'm going to see what happens. Yeah, I lost. No, I got the thread. Uh -huh. I saved the thread. 
That's good. Okay, I'm going to uh, anchor it and put it down. Still have the thread, that's good. Go back again, and then I'm going to raise the shoe and rotate it. So this is uh, the whole thing rotating. Hold it into place, put the shoe down, and then bring it down to the bottom. And overshoot. Okay, you're going to straighten it out now and hit the reverse. And go back and forth a couple of times. Just set it, and then that's done. You're going to raise the needle up, pull it out, and you, you've had that one done. You're going to do that, I think I counted nine times on the small ones, because there's more than the tall ones, the four inch ones. So that's your, uh, that's how you do the small ones. I'm not going to show you each one of them. All right, trim it up, and you're done with that. I'll trim the, I'm going to trim this guy off right now. So the excess tape, you don't want in your way. So I'm going to just cut the tape off. Okay, once again, you want this guy to be up like this. All right, remember, all of them have to be like this, okay? Otherwise, you'll have them zigzagging all back and forth if you want them to look professionally done. So I'm taking this, putting a plus four in there, right on the mark. Put it on the other side. Okay, where we have plus four and the tape covered. All right. The tape's not giving me any sticky stuff, like sticky Velcro on the needle, which is really nice. So go down and back, over, back, okay, on an angle. And I have a toolbox here holding this thing in place. So this is giving me a little challenge, holding the whole net in place so it doesn't run away. This goes down, run over, then straight and back. Bring it up, bring the shoe up, bring it out, and you're all set. Do that to all the four inch ones, and they're, they're a lot easier than the uh, zeros that, that, that I did. All right, trim it up. Okay, and anything else that needs to be trimmed, like tape and so on. So there it is. Really nice. It's on there for good. Hey, you know, if these things ever break, they're so easy to change if that happens. Okay? Well, that's the finished product right there, guys. Um, Got bungee cords on the sides, two, two on each side, which is good. Only one clip I got backwards that actually works to my benefit. All right, so um, if you start scraping up, uh, I would put electric tape around here or some kind of tape underneath these if you're worried about uh, scraping up your paint. All right, but this is, uh, this is it. A little buckled in the middle, but I'm not worried about that because once we start hanging things on here, it's probably going to straighten out stuff. So that's the, that's the first of the three. The other two are st still laying down. I'm not going to put those up. All right, so I'm going to put these back in this container, which is right over there. And um, get ready for a craft show I have on the 18th of August.